Electrons can orbit around a nuclei at different energy levels or different orbits. Each of these orbits relates to a particular energy. The ground state or stable state is the bottom one. If the electrons move to a higher energy state, it is in an unstable state. Electrons can be knocked into higher energy states either by photons hitting them or by high speed electrons hitting them. Here we can see an electron hits and can knock the electron into a higher energy state. This electron is now unstable and it needs to become stable by dropping energy levels. The only way it can do this is by releasing a photon of light. The energy of the photon is related to the difference in energy levels between this level and this level. It still needs to become stable, so it drops again. Notice we get a different frequency of light being emitted. That's because this energy level difference is different to this energy level difference. Sometimes what can happen is electrons can become stable by dropping more than one energy level, yet again releasing a different energetic photon. Slow moving electrons might not enough, have enough energy to move the electron to a high energy state, so may only lift it to the next energy level. Electrons cannot exist between energy levels. They can only exist at a particular energy level. Here we can see that this electron that it drops will release one photon of light. High speed electrons will give it more energy. Here the electron has been ionized. Once it's ionized the electron cannot drop back down into a stable state. The amount of energy needed to do this is given by this energy level here which is 13.6 electron volts. Electrons can always also be moved to higher energy states when photons hit them. This shows that photons behave like particles. Once again, the electron drops back into a stable state. So, just to summarize then, the energy of the release photon is the same as the energy difference between the energy levels that the electron drops. So here we can see the energy of the photon will be 10.2 electron volts. To convert it into joules, we have to multiply by the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So therefore in joules, the amount of energy that it's got is 16.32. We have to convert to joules before we can use this formula here because Planck's constant is given in the units joule seconds. So the frequency is proportional to this energy level. To find the wavelength, we have to use this formula to rearrange once we've found the frequency. So to rearrange this, frequency is equal to the speed of light, c, divided by lambda, the wavelength.